The BRICS leaders' meeting, scheduled to occur in Kazan, Russia in October 2024, will mark the 16th such gathering, now including new members, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Iran, and Ethiopia. This expanded alliance of nine nations will focus on its future direction, emphasizing stronger partnerships and increased use of local currencies for transactions to reduce the dominance of the dollar. The inclusion of these new states underscores the organization's aim to establish itself as a major economic entity amidst a shifting global order. Anton Kobiakov, assistant to the president of Russia, recently highlighted that 59 countries are interested in joining BRICS, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SEO, or the Eurasian Economic Union, EAU, next year, driven by a shared commitment to multipolarity and a reduced reliance on the dollar. He noted the growing significance of organizations like BRICS and CO, predicting their rise as pivotal economic players in a changing world. The current state of global economics presents a stark picture of the challenges faced by many developing nations, with soaring unemployment and inflation, depleted foreign currency reserves, and a lack of fuel and gas, these countries are grappling with severe economic crisis. International financial agencies, dissatisfied with financial instability and defaults on payments, are pressuring these nations, which are also dealing with political unrest. In local and political discussions, there is a focus on the failures of successive governments, corruption, and the need for radical change. This scenario is not unique to any single country but affects over 105 developing nations, collectively housing more than 1.5 billion people. The interconnectedness of their economic woes necessitates a broader understanding of global fiscal dynamics. In 2022, the UNDP reported that the pandemic had pushed developing country debt to a 50-year high, equating to more than 250% of government revenues. UNDP Administrator Achim Steiner outlined the compounded crisis these countries face, including low foreign reserves, energy shortages exacerbated by the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and social unrest, all of which negatively impact international funding prospects. This cycle of dependence seems poised to continue with Sri Lanka's situation serving as a harbinger for similar crises across other global South states. Steiner emphasized the risk of financial and fiscal instability leading to political crises when countries default and basic supplies become scarce. The prevailing discourse suggests that navigating these crises requires the intervention of international multilateral investment banks and agencies, like the IMF, which need to adopt more flexible approaches such as debt service suspension initiatives, DSSI, despite calls for debt forgiveness as a step towards global equity, such discussions often go unheard, continuing the legacy of the decolonization movement. This prediction remains relevant, with Bolivia being the latest example of this interdependence. As these countries struggle with debt repayment, the conversation has shifted towards reducing reliance on the U.S. dollar in global trade, particularly in light of local currency devaluations and the impact of U.S. sanctions. Brazilian President Lula da Silva's call at a BRICS summit in Johannesburg for a common currency among member states highlights this push towards economic sovereignty. However, experts point out that trade between BRICS countries remains limited. Nevertheless, China's role as a major exporter and economic powerhouse within BRICS presents a potential nexus for such a monetary union. Countries like Brazil and Argentina have already started trading in yuan instead of dollars, and Bolivia is following suit as part of its de-dollarization process. The BRICS expansion, which now includes Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and the UAE, represents a significant portion of the global population and oil production. These nations' experiences with unilateral sanctions underscore the importance of economic sovereignty and de-dollarization. Reforming international financial institutions like the IMF and World Bank has been a BRICS goal since its inception, aiming to reflect the interests of the global South more accurately. The potential rise of the Chinese renminbi as an alternative to the dollar could prompt these institutions to reconsider their debt payment methodologies. Challenges remain in shifting away from the dollar, given its entrenched role in global trade. For instance, a 2023 study revealed that a significant portion of India's and China's exports are still dollar-denominated despite their minimal trade with the U.S. However, this gradual move towards de-dollarization signals growing frustrations within the global south and an opportunity for the U.S. to reassess its partnerships. While the creation of a BRICS currency is still distant, the group has gained substantial bargaining power since its formation. To move forward, BRICS must overcome internal differences and establish a collective strategy for sustainable de-dollarization. This process could benefit from the expertise of organizations like UNDP and UNCTAD and involve public discussions among experts from both the Global South and North. 
avoiding another global economic crisis and mitigating the economic collapse symptoms affecting over 105 global South states requires a well-understood and advocated path towards global equity. This understanding is crucial not only in the South but also in the North. Natasha Gunaraitan, with her extensive background in international law, human rights and public diplomacy, emphasizes the importance of building South-South cooperation and public accessibility to global geopolitical and economic issues. Recent statements from Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi at a BRICS foreign ministers meeting in Russia highlight China's call for BRICS to take on greater responsibilities and establish itself as an inclusive global entity. This call comes amidst Western sanctions and trade restrictions on Chinese companies due to their support for Russia in the Ukraine conflict. The politicization of economic issues and unilateral sanctions have grown prompting BRICS to counter Western dominance and expand its membership. Wang's remarks underscore the need for BRICS to evolve into a new multilateral cooperation mechanism driven by emerging markets in developing countries. He also highlighted China's willingness to work with Brazil to enhance BRICS' role in global governance and protect the interests of developing countries. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. The expansion of BRICS with new members like Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAA, along with applications from additional countries, indicates a significant shift in the global order. This expanded grouping, accounting for a substantial portion of the world's population, trade, and energy production, challenges the dominance of Western-led institutions like the World Bank and AMF BRICS Plus aims to align emerging markets on global topics and economic opportunities, building institutions with implications for energy trade, international finance, supply chains, and technological research. As this movement progresses, global companies must consider the geopolitical and economic realities of BRICS expansion in their investment strategies. BRICS has evolved from its initial skepticism into a functioning bloc with growing economic ties among its members. Trade among BRICS economies has significantly outpaced trade with G7 nations, and recent crises have accelerated the momentum for BRICS expansion. However, challenges remain due to the diverse political, economic, and cultural backgrounds of its members and existing geopolitical tensions. A stronger BRICS Plus can impact global energy, trade networks, infrastructure, monetary policy, and technology. The group's energy dynamics are particularly notable, with significant shares in global crude oil and natural gas production and consumption. The potential for a parallel energy trading system among BRICS Plus members could influence global oil prices and trade practices. Trade networks within BRICS Plus are crucial for economic development, with intra BRICS trade growing significantly. While there are no comprehensive free trade agreements covering all BRICS Plus members, the group serves as a forum for enhancing market access and cooperation in various sectors. Infrastructure and development financing have seen the most progress in BRICS Plus institution building. The New Development Bank, NDB, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, IIB, have provided substantial funding for projects across member countries, generating significant revenue and enhancing financial resources. BRICS Plus also aims to reduce dependence on the Western-led international monetary system. Initiatives like BRICS Bay and the Contingent Reserve Arrangement promote financial independence and resilience against sanctions and currency volatility. Technological cooperation is another key area with partnerships in space, industrial innovation, and clean energy. Global companies need to adapt to the evolving BRICS Plus landscape by developing market strategies, leveraging infrastructure investments, balancing supply chains, refining risk and compliance measures, and building geopolitical awareness. The rise of BRICS Plus signifies a structural shift in the global order, reflecting the growing influence of emerging markets. As BRICS Plus continues to grow and develop formal institutions, it presents both opportunities and challenges for businesses. Companies that adapt to these changes and consider the geopolitical and economic implications of BRICS expansion will be better positioned to thrive in an increasingly multipolar world. In summary, the BRICS leaders' meeting in Kazan, Russia, marks a significant moment for the expanded alliance. The inclusion of new member states, the push for local currencies, and the focus on reducing dollar dominance highlight BRICS' role in shaping the future global economic landscape. Amidst the economic crisis faced by developing nations, the move towards economic sovereignty and reduced dependence on Western-led institutions is crucial for achieving global equity and stability. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.